Hey everyone, Desi is here with another EverQuest video, and in this video I'm going to be doing something a little different than the past three videos. Usually I've been on Project 1999, specifically on my Necromancer, but I decided to give Project Quorum a try. I saw several comments recommending it. I also had my own curiosity beforehand as well, because it's just fun to get to discover different ways of playing the game you love and Project Quorum seems to be another route in enjoying the, the classic EverQuest experience. What deviates from this server in comparison with Project 1999 is that this server will go past Velius into Lucklin and then inevitably into the Plains of Power, which it will lock at at that point, which I believe will last around three years from now. Um, so there's an ever-evolving nature to this server, unlike Project 1999. I, I really do enjoy Project 1999, and I'm still going to level up my Necromancer as probably my primary manner of playing this game. But I figured I would just give Project Korma a try too, just to give it an honest play and seeing the differences between Project 1999 as well as TLP servers because there's just so many different ways of playing this game and that's another reason why I just really like this genre of playing. It's the same for for World of Warcraft Classic, um, World of Warcraft Retail, there's all those different versions of that game and it's really cool to be able to play this same game but under all of these different subsets of it. So as you can see in this video I'm a <laughs> Looks like I'm gonna die here. I think I might have overestimated my uh, my combat, uh, my uh, my target here. <laughs> a jungle spider went and got me. But I made a ogre shaman named Glamio. And also, I'm not sure if it's just until level six, but when I die, I still have all my stuff. So maybe there aren't corpse runes in Project Quorum but I don't think that's the case. So Project Quorum is running on, I'm not sure the specific client, but I believe it's tied to the Elkabor project, which was, oh nice, I can sell my stuff here. And the Elkabor project was the Apple OS equivalent of EverQuest, um, since EverQuest wasn't really available on MacBooks or anything, Project Elkabor, or the Elkabor Project was a manner in which people could play EverQuest on, on that different OS. And so it's utilizing this kind of client, and it's, it's just really, really fun to kind of look through these old systems of EverQuest in a way I never really got to explore much growing up. I never played EverQuest a lot when I was younger and was able to kind of create these memories about how the game actually was. It's mostly just faint memories from my childhood. It's kind of blurry. So being able to, to log into this older client and kind of be able to see just the, the differences in how the game runs, how slow it is to load a spell in the spell book. It's just, it's kind of interesting just to see those little changes. Um, I like to just, yeah, that attention to little details, like the, the text on Project Quorum in comparison to Project 1999, which is based on the Titanium client, which goes up to the depths of Dark Hollow. And that, I believe, is several expansions after Planes of Power. Um, so this client is objectively an older foundation of the game which Project Quorum is running on. But as I was saying, just the the text itself, it's a little more blurry. Looking at old screenshots of the game, that's how the font actually was during that time. And it just, it really adds to that authentic, authentic classic look. And I think Project 1999 is a very polished and 
very nice looking recreation of the classic experience, but you can't help but notice that there are some elements in the user interface, as well as some gameplay mechanics, most likely, that sort of relate more to that post-classic experience. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm making a lot of sense here, but just going into Project Quorum, I, I can tell that the atmosphere feels a little bit more authentic and, and just the overall feel of, of the gameplay. Like the slower spell times, there's that old compass. I know that's not classic, it's probably Planes of Power, but and the, the ping time up here, just these little elements. And there's also some quality of life improvements from what I've been seeing. I can actually see how long this buff will last <laughs> versus in Project 1999, where I have to kind of make assumptions or try to, to determine in myself how long a buff is. And I think there's a lot of value to that as well. So I'm not, I'm not trying to undermine Project 1999, and I'm also not trying to undermine Project Quorum as well. These are both, in their own right, a valid experience of the EverQuest game that we all love. And there's no right or wrong way to play, and there's no right or wrong server to play on. They're both different in their own ways, and it's easy to make comparisons and to try to determine what's better because it's on the same game, so there's a lot of factors to to compare because it's on the same foundation. But they're both attempting to recreate completely different experiences, and I think that's that's very important to to identify when it comes to looking at these servers and deciding what server you want to play on. And also the fact that you don't really need to be an exclusive player of one server. Um, EverQuest is a game that does require a lot of time commitment, so that is a very important factor. You don't want to put all of this time into Project 1999 and then go into Project Quorum where you have nothing and reset all of the effort and time you put into something else towards, some, towards something new. That that kind of comes with the experience of the MMO in general, that sunk cost fallacy of, you know, it's not even a fallacy at some points. You put in more time into a certain game, that effort that you put in comes back to you in the form of experience, you know, currency, alts, the community itself of playing with the same individuals that you've encountered several times before and cultivating that tight-knit community. It's, it really connects to our tribalistic tendencies of humanity, of wanting to be a part of a group. And so it's completely understandable why people are looking at Project Quorum um, like it is, this is the way to go and any other experience is inferior. So I completely understand that mentality. But just for myself playing these servers, I want to look at it a little bit more on the even playing field, but also being able to, to see that these two servers are their own unique experiences and that's just as valid. So all of my rambling aside, I, I must have had to just get that out of my system. <laughs> This um, ogre shaman I made, I, I never made an ogre really. I think when I was a kid I had an ogre warrior that I got to level 11 or something. And my dad twinked him out, but I, I really want to play an ogre for some reason. Something about it was just very alluring to me. The past couple days, and I'm sure I'm going to do this on Project 1999 as well, I just really wanted to make an ogre and I really wanted to play a shaman. I am not finding any mobs <laughs> that are my level. I think I'm just going to the wrong spots. I, I was somewhere where there's so many level one mobs, but I, I just lost it. But that's fine. This video is mostly just about talking anyways, and if I find mobs to kill, that is, that'll be good. 
Um, anyways, I really wanted to make an ogre shaman. I never really played a shaman, and I never really played an ogre, so it's kind of the perfect combination to have a unique and novel experience in the game itself. And after playing a necromancer, I, I am only level 22 on Project 1999. I've I really liked the gameplay loop of the necromancer, of being able to solo effectively and kind of cultivate a unique playstyle of being able to go where I want and utilizing... Oh, these guys. Oh, they look at me indifferently. Okay. These... Yeah, these are NPCs. Uh, let's see. But I know that playing a shaman, from what I've read, and kind of my own general understanding... I think that's Kazakh Thul over there. I don't really want to go there. Just my own general understanding of what a shaman is. They have so many utilities, and they're such a multifaceted class. I, I can't say I know all of the specific abilities they have. I, I simply don't. But from what I've been, let's see, but from what I've been reading about recently and also connecting it into the classic EverQuest experience, they're the best soloers in the game. And I've really liked being able to solo, so having that capability seems very alluring to me, as well as the fact that they can heal in groups, they can do dots and slow, they have a pet. They have Spirit of the Wolf at level 9, which ugh, I love Spirit of the Wolf and I hate asking for it all the time. I always feel like a leech, always asking a druid for, for Spirit of the Wolf. But having a self-sufficient way to run fast, oh my gosh, that would be nice. That's why I want to get the Journeyman boots really bad in Project 1999, just to be able to have that sufficient... I think the lower level mobs are past this bridge. But yeah, um, shamans just seem like the next class I would like to play, in addition to the Necromancer. And they also do melee as well, from from what I would believe. Especially early on, you have to melee. But I'm sure in groups, besides just the utility of healing and dots and your pet, it probably wouldn't hurt to, to melee DPS as well as a shaman. Uh, comment below if, if that is a common role when it comes to, to playing this class in groups. Are, are you still later on in mid to high end levels? Are you are you meleeing or are you just sitting in the back and metting? Either route is just as uh, valid, but I, I'm just kind of curious if shamans are a melee class as well. This has been a very, very unsuccessful leveling journey so far. I'm almost level 2, but I am really struggling to find any mobs. Hmm. It's probably not the most exciting gameplay to, uh, to watch either. Or maybe if you're just listening, I hope I can you know, provide some of that random person on the internet talking about something you're interested in in the background because honestly that's what I tend to to listen to I, I like to listen to videos talking about topics that I'm interested in and just doing something else with my life at the same time and that's a, a big reason here we go we got a mob let's go that's a big reason why I wanted to start making videos as well EverQuest is something I'm very passionate about and I like talking about things I'm passionate about. And if there's anybody who likes to listen to content of people talking about things they're passionate about, then I'd love to be able to fill that fill that that niche, I guess. Oof, this is a struggle to kill this bat. And talking a little bit more about my channel in general, I'm extremely appreciative for all of the the feedback and interactions I've gotten on my past few videos as well as all my new subscribers thank you so much for for showing interest in the channel I am okay yep I could definitely take this guy now I am excited to make videos especially relating to EverQuest right now I just feel very 
very passionate about just making this content. It's, it's very fun for me. I'm also on spring break right now from classes. I'm in my final semester at university, so excited to be done with that and to be able to put more time into my channel. It's kind of my big goal for this year is I would really, really like to reach a thousand subscribers by the end of the year. There we go, level two. Let's see what this spider has. Oops. But that is kind of my goal with this channel and also just to make content that I enjoy to make. And if people watch it, that's awesome. If they don't, you know, that's awesome. I, I just like to make videos and I always have my whole life. <laughs> oh, bat. Now we're making moves. Oh, guy over there. I, I really like the aesthetic of uh, Ogre Shaman in Classic specifically, like the, the pre-Lucklin models. I think the Ogre model in... The Classic Ogre model in EverQuest, and, and the Troll model as well, since they're pretty much the same, same model itself, but just differently colored. It's just such a unique variance in <laughs> between other races. Like, you are objectively just this big humanoid blob running around with a goofy look on your face. <laughs> just for a roleplay aspect, it's it's cool to see that in games. And I, I know when I was playing Final Fantasy XIV, most of the, the races were so homogenous. They they all looked relatively the same. Oh, Bucko grabs hold of Glamio and begins to dance with him. Well, that's that's nice. Thank you. Thanks for the dance. And I think that uh, relating back to other MMOs, cause MMOs are my favorite gaming genre of all time. It probably always will be. But relating to other MMOs, like Final Fantasy XIV, I, I wouldn't say this for World of Warcraft. Um, in retail, at least. Maybe in classic. But all of the races that you can play all pretty much look exactly the same, but just different color variants for different ears. You have cat ears or bunny ears. Or it's the one race that does kind of look different, which is the... The tiny people race, I, I, the name lost me, like Lolly or something, I don't really know. But in Classic EverQuest, I feel like all of the races are so distinct from each other. The gnomes are really tiny, the ogres are huge and blobs. A lot of the elves, albeit the elves look pretty much the same. And it's interesting, when you're in the options of EverQuest and you want to decide if you want to use the Lucklin models or the classic models, if you check the box of, say, a Wood Elf, it will also automatically check the box of the Dark Elf, the Half Elf, the Human, I believe. And that kind of shows that in the code of this game that those models are based on the same blueprint. So... It, that just makes sense on a technical standpoint as well. When you're when you're designing a game, oh my lord, this guy's gonna kill me. When you are designing a game, you want to be as cheap as possible and use the least amount of assets for the same amount of effect. Rest in peace to my uh, ogre shaman again. So I get it on a technical standpoint. And it's been interesting to look at interviews of developers talking about effort quests as well. Um, one of the spell designers was talking about uh, the sound effects in the game and basically saying that when they created this game and the layout and the world, the thing that set this game apart from anything else was was just the world and the, the scale of it and being able to interact with this world. The peripheral effects, like sound effects and the UI and, you know, a couple of these other components of the game that are very important were kind of cheaply produced because that wasn't the center focus of the game. Like sound effects. I think the sound effects 
for classic EverQuest are lovely in most regards, but you can tell it was it was mostly an afterthought when it came to this game. the The primary focus was the game itself, and especially in 1997 and developing into this game, there wasn't a strong precedent for how a video game should be. And with years of reference points and being able to look at all of these past games to create an MMO in this day and age. There's so many tools to make the best thing you can make with 2020 hindsight. Wrong spell. But they seem to just not be able to, oh, oops. They seem to just not be able to deliver that magic that EverQuest had. And that's why we always keep coming back to this game in emulated servers, in timelock progressions. Okay, that's Oguk. In any way we can to play in this old school MMO because there is just, there is still just a soul to it that cannot be recreated in other mediums, at least from what we've seen so far. And there's been attempts, um, specifically with Ashes of Creation and Pantheon. Unfortunately, Brad McQuaid passed away. But there's... Everyone knows the experience itself and the magic behind it playing this game. And there's other factors about it too. Just about life, our life changing around us and... We have all of these memories and we want to relive them. It'll it'll never be the same, but even beyond that, the game itself is still it still holds that spirit. And that's why getting back into Project 1999 and now Project Quorum for me has been such a thrill and just such a, a nice reprieve in my life of all the chaos around it, but still being able to look back and enjoy this beautiful world that was created 25 years ago. It's, it's a really, it's a really awesome experience and I'm really happy to be playing again and making content regarding, regarding the game again. So this video, I, I suppose I'm going to cut it short because I've just been kind of rambling for 20 minutes and I think I've killed three or four mobs. Here, let's take this guy out. But this was just another, I suppose, rant video, just talking about the experience of our quest and, oh, a guard. Wonder if he has anything on him. I don't want to loot my kin though. <laughs> but I think I'd like to make different videos about EverQuest in different perspectives outside of the the narrative of my necromancer, which I've really been enjoying making and having so much fun playing him. I'm probably going to log into him later today and play him. But thank you so much for watching the video. If you are currently playing uh, Project Quorum, uh, comment below if you've been having a good time or a bad time. And what class are you playing? Like, what level are you? I'd, I'd really be interested in knowing, just to see kind of what's what other people are up to. Um, if you're if you aren't subscribed, I make EverQuest content, and I'm going to continue making EverQuest content. So, I would really appreciate if if you subscribe to the channel, um, if you're interested, um, as well as leaving a like. I appreciate the all the support in my other videos, and it really helps me out in being able to get these videos out to more people who are interested in the EverQuest experience, and even people who aren't, and are able to be shown this kind of world just for the first time in some way. If, even if one person discovers EverQuest from these videos, that would be awesome. So thank you so much. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Take care.